Hi everybody and welcome to another Sunday of Kids Church Online. I hope that you're all really well and that you've had yet another lovely week in your summer holidays. Well, we've got a lot happening. We're going to get deeper into the story of Moses. I mean, you can't believe everything that has happened to him, but always God is in complete control. And Megan and Rebecca are going to be talking us through that and giving us a fun activity today. Then we've got another prayer slot with Rebecca W. And hopefully you're really learning something about spending time with God and how we can do that. Before we do any of that, though, let's take a quick moment to thank God for everything that's going on. Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for the beautiful part of the world where we live, for the home that we're watching this in, for the family that we have beside us, and for the fact that you love us completely and totally. Keep us safe now. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul Yeah. 
Good morning everybody and welcome back to Kids Church Online this morning. So over the last couple of weeks we have been learning about Moses and his early life. Last week then we looked about how Moses was called by God back to Egypt to help out his people, the Israelites. And do you remember God sent those 10 warnings to Pharaoh to tell him to let the Israelites go. And finally, at the end of our story, we saw Moses and the rest of the Israelites finally escape slavery in Egypt. So it was a really happy ending and we thought that that would be the drama done for Moses' life and his troubles with Pharaoh would be over. But Unfortunately, Pharaoh is back this week and causing more tricks and troubles for Moses and his people. But the great thing is in our story this morning is that Moses is continuing to trust in God and God is helping him do the impossible every step of the way. So sit down and get ready to listen to our story this morning. God makes a way, Moses and the Red Sea, from Exodus 14 and 15. Moses and God's people escaped out of Egypt and into the wilderness. They didn't know the way, but God knew the way and he showed them. I will bring you to a new home, a special land, God promised them. I will look after you, I am with you. Well hello everyone, welcome back. I am so glad to have you all with us again today. Me and the Israelites are still walking through the desert. I realised when I got out of Egypt, I have no idea where we are supposed to be going. But one thing that I am sure of is that God knows the plan for us. He is taking us in the right direction and where we are supposed to go. So I just need to keep trusting and following him. Right, let's keep going. God sent a big cloud for them to follow. A pillar of smoke stretching up to the sky. It moved in front of them as they walked and shaded them from the blazing heat of the day. And when it was time to rest, it stopped. All through the cold desert nights, it kept them warm, glowing like a fire. God led his people through the desert to the edge of the great sea. They were just wondering how to cross it when, suddenly, they heard a terrible thundering and pounding. It sounded almost like horses' hooves. They shaded their eyes to look back and screamed. It was. Pharaoh and his army were coming to get them. Pharaoh had changed his mind again. Get my slaves back, he screeched and charged out into the desert after them. With 600 of his fastest horsemen and every single chariot in Egypt. What were God's people going to do? In front of them was a big sea. It was so big there was no way around it. But there was no way through it. It was too deep. They didn't have any boats so they couldn't sail across. And they couldn't swim across because it was too far and they would drown. And they couldn't turn back because Pharaoh was chasing them. They could see the flashing swords now, glinting in the baking sun. And then the dust clouds and chariot after scary chariot surging towards them. So they did the only thing there was left to do. Panic! So everyone is panicking. No one knows what to do and no one is listening to me. All we can hear is the sound of Pharaoh's horses coming closer and closer to us. But I know that we need to just wait for God. I'm telling the Israelites that they need to trust in him, but no one is listening. 
but I am going to try and stay calm and keep reassuring them that God is watching and he is going to create a way for us to get through this sea. We are going to die, they shrieked. Don't be afraid, Moses said. But there's nothing we can do, they screamed. God knows you can't do anything, Moses said. God will do it for you. Trust him and watch. But there's no way out, they cried. God will make a way, Moses said. Another minute and it would have been over. But then the strangest thing happened. God made the pillar of smoke move. It moved behind his people and hid them from the Egyptians. Then God sent a strong east wind to blow all night long. It blew on the water of the big sea. It blew to the left and it blew to the right until it blew into two towering walls of water. And there, right through the middle of the sea, a muddy pathway opened up and God's people walked across on dry land. Well, I can't believe what I have just seen. The sea literally just parted in front of us. It was incredible. Never mind that the cloud of smoke protected us and allowed us to keep hidden from the Egyptian army coming towards us. Our God is incredible. Now, the people are even more amazed than me because they didn't think God could be so powerful. But I just cannot stop thanking and worshipping him for the amazing God that he is. We are all singing and dancing and are so happy and thankful for our God for protecting us once again. When the Egyptians tried to follow, the walls of the water crashed back down on them and swallowed them up. God's people were safe. They danced and laughed and sang and thanked God. When there had been no way out, God had made a way. Many years later, once again, God was going to make a way when there was no way. From the beginning, God's children had been running from him and hiding. God knew his children could never be happy without him, but they couldn't get back to him by themselves. They were lost. They didn't know the way back, but God knew, and one day he would show them. So I hope you enjoyed our story this morning and hearing more about Moses' life. Isn't it incredible in this story that even though all the Israelites thought that they were lost, they had no way out, Pharaoh was coming behind them, the sea was in front of them, they thought that they were going to die and started panicking, but still in the middle of all the panic, Moses was calm. And that was God working in him. It was because he trusted in God and he knew that God always finds a way out. And he used that cloud of smoke to create protection around the Israelites so that the Egyptians couldn't see them. He then blew the wind over the sea and created two big walls of water. Now, can you imagine going to the seaside Maybe you've been to Port Rush or Port Stewart before and you've seen the beach and the sea. Imagine if you were standing on the beach and saw the sea completely part and a path walk through. You would hardly believe your eyes. And that is what the Israelites and Moses saw. And it just shows us again the incredible power of God. This story also reminds me that God is always looking after us. He then, later on, sent Jesus to free us. Because, after all, everyone on earth is lost. We all sin and make mistakes and we are lost from God. We don't have a clear way to heaven. So God sent Jesus for us so that he can make that path 
for us to walk to to get to heaven. So that is why I love this story. Now, there is still one more exciting part of Moses' life that we want to hear about next week. So tune in to hear the one last story all about Moses. So wow, what an amazing story we've just heard. I love the story um, of the parting of the Red Sea because I think it shows God's amazing power but also his ability to save his people. God promised um, his people back when Moses and his followers um, were living that he would deliver them from the slavery that they were living and that's exactly what happened when he parted the Red Sea. This also shows that God will come back and save us from all of our sins that burden us today. And really that's the parallel that we want to look at in the story. And isn't that just amazing to know that God would come back and do the same thing for us as he did for Moses and his people back then. So we're now going to do a little craft and um, hopefully you'll be able to follow along at home and make something lovely and um, that you can show your grannies, your grandas, your friends um, once you've uh, finished. So hi everyone, before we start our craft for this week, we're going to do a little activity. So you can try this yourselves after the service if you want, or you can just watch me here. So what we're gonna do is try and recreate the parting of the Red Sea. Obviously this is a little bit less water than what God had to part, but hopefully you'll get the idea um, of what Moses and his followers would have experienced. So what we've got is just a bowl filled with water. We're gonna then sprinkle some pepper like I've done on top. So firstly, I'm gonna put my finger into the bowl and as you can see, nothing happens to the pepper at all. It all just stays in the same place. We're then gonna get some soup, put it on my finger and rub it together. This time, you're gonna to have to watch and see what happens to the pepper as I put my finger into the water. As you can see, all the pepper moves to the outside of the bowl and this is exactly what would have happened to the water as Moses and his followers watched it separate so they could pass through. So, hello everyone. We're now going to do our craft for this week. So this week's craft is actually quite simple. All you need is if you can find a blue piece of paper, that would be easiest. But if you have some plain white paper, you can also use that. You'll also need a pencil because we're going to do some drawing and some colouring in pencils to colour in our picture after. So to start with, we're going to get our piece of paper and fold it so that we get two halves on each side at the front. So you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this. The outside is then going to be the Red Sea. So what I need you to do is design it whatever way you like. So draw some underwater animals, some fish, sharks, dolphins, whatever you can think of to design the outside. You can write the Red Sea along the top as well. I'm going to show you a couple of examples that I done earlier on. So this is one um, that I done on blue paper. So as you can see, the blue background represents the sea. You can also do it on white paper, as I said, so if you then would colour in all the background blue so that it looks like the sea as well. After that, we're then going to open up. So this is like Moses, or God parting the Red Sea for Moses to pass through. You then want to draw Moses and the Israelites crossing through the Red Sea. At the top, I wrote a little Bible verse. So I chose to write Exodus chapter 14, verse 22. So that is, so the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand side and their left. So you can write whatever you want at the top, pick your own verse, pick the same verse as I did, but you can have sort of free reign to design it whatever way you like. You can then show your friends and your family what you've created this Sunday. I hope you enjoy doing the craft as much as I've enjoyed preparing it for you this morning. Good morning. This morning we are looking at the Lord's Prayer. And now this is a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. And so for us, it's pretty important that we learn it too. So I have found a little song that we can listen to 
that will hopefully help us to remember it and pray it to God. <laughs>